Okay, welcome back to my geeky hobby. Um, today we are continuing with Nabu PC. Um, we're going to do a little bit more hacking, uh, and I'm going to show you some some of the tools that I have um, that I use for this sort of work. Uh, but before we uh, head on to Nabu, let's um, have a quick look at what has happened in the last week. It's pretty amazing that so many people started playing around and messing around with Nabu. Um, obviously, we have good progress on um, on using the, the emulated adapter and uploading the original files that um, Nabu used to use on their network. Um, great job, um, you know, great job on this channel. Um, I'm hoping at some point um, he will share, um, share the, the work and share the files so we can all uh, start using it at some point. Um, another great channel, and I think you know a lot of people missed it because he's only got uh, 57 subscriber subscribers. Um, Ken Segler, I mean, he's pretty much created um, a small adapter, um, a small adapter that he's able to virtualize some additional storage, and he created a new BIOS for um, for his Nabu, and he is able to pretty much boot basic. Um, on, on the Nabu, and I believe he's working on CPM as well. Um, great job, Ken! And uh, you know, additionally, Ken is actually sharing all of his um, all of his work already on GitHub. So this is what uh, I'll be using. You know, I'll be using some of his uh, findings and some of his code. I did share on my previous video um, some of the work he's done. But um, if you look at this, guys, I mean, he's um, he's progressed quite well with um, low-level uh, Nabu hacking. Um, so that's uh, that's really great to see. What I'll be showing you today is um, a, a little bit of a different approach to what um, what I've showed you last week. Where uh, last week, um, let me just bring you closer to um, to this. Last week we were um, ultimately um, messing around with a with a with the EEPROM memory, and um, you know we had an EEPROM as a replacement, but we were juggling around. Um, taking the memory in and out of the computer as we were trying to update the, the ROM. Um, this week what I'm using is a bit of a tool that replaces one of those EEPROMs temporarily. So this is an EEPROM emulator. Um, there are different uh, emulators available. This one is actually my open source project that you can replicate and do it yourself. Um, so this is a device that will hook into our uh, NABU and what it will do, it will allow us to very quickly update the code on the NABU and, uh, and test it. So what I will do is um, I will simply plug the uh, EEPROM emulator into the socket um, of inside the NABU. There's a reset um, hook that I can hook into the reset button on NABU and I've got a USB connection to a computer. Um, and that's pretty much all we need to get NABU um, emulated or the, the ROM inside NABU emulated the way that um, we can simply upload new code from a computer and very quickly verify and test. So that's the setup that I'll use for today. Um, I'll also use um, I'll also use Ken's code or parts of uh, Ken's code. So let's go back to the computer for a second, and um, you know Ken Ken figured out quite early how to. Um, how to calculate the checksum. He figured out that, you know, at the end of the binary file, um, there, is, there is some additional uh, numbers and those numbers are actually the, the, the checksum that Nabu is looking for. So the last two bytes um, in all those binary files, uh, it will be the checksum um, and can shared a bit of code to uh, calculate the checksum. Um, I will later put, uh, put this stuff also on, uh, on my GitHub. Um, so his code um, had um, file names hard coded. So I just modified the the code um, a to support both the 8K and the 4K uh, ROMs, and b to support to support uh, passing a, a file in the argument. So we have um, we have an executable uh, that we can use to update this uh, checksum after compiling. Um, so that will make make our life uh, easier. Um, on, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be using today a Raspberry Pi um, to do all of this hacking, um, but um, I will upload into the GitHub as well and, uh, you know, a Windows executable 
that you can uh, use also to uh, modify the checksums. So what, um, you know, what I wanted to very quickly show you today is we are already at the point where uh, we have the assembly version of the code. Um, and you know, this, is, uh, this has been done by using Z80 DASM uh, disassembler. This one is a little bit better because it automatically creates a bunch of labels. So wherever code calls an address, uh, this disassembler will automatically create a label for you. So it's later much easier to rename those labels because the code is kind of labeled with, uh, with the different um, subroutines. Um, we also, um, so by the way, a basic, you know, if you just do a disassembly of the code um, towards the end, it will put a whole bunch of knobs and the, the piece of code that we actually need, um, uh, the, the piece of code that we actually need um, with, the, with the checksum is at the very end of the code. So I kind of, um, um, you know, added um, this bit at the, at the end uh, so we can recreate the, the checksum later. But um, so that's my assembly code. And, um, you know, I just arbitrarily added some additional um, assembly command lines, uh, sorry, assembly commands, just to show you that this assembly code, I can, I can modify it very easily. So literally, you know, you can put, you can modify the, co the, the code uh, based on what you need. Of course, you need to write the code uh, in, in Z80 assembly, but, um, you know, arbitrary, if I put anywhere here, some additional code, um, like for example here and save this um, I can now go back to um, to the compiler and compile it um, I have a shell script that does the the, com the compiling for me but I what, what I wanted to show you and what uh, what I feel is more important let's uh, power up the NABU actually what I uh, wanted to uh, very quickly show you and what I feel is, um, is sort of important is um, for you to see what's happening and how quickly this whole process looks like. So remember we have the, the EEPROM emulator um, inside or plugged in into the NABU. Let me just kind of reposition my camera so you see the, well, now you lost actually the, the NABU screen. Let me move it a little bit away, right, just like that. So remember, I modified the assembly code. Um, Nabu has booted and it's booted from that EEPROM emulator that I was telling you about. So this thing pretends to be the ROM. Um, I've done my modification. I now want to recompile the code. Um, I run this, um, this is all running on a, on a Raspberry Pi in this case. Um, but what it will do, it will compile the code, the modified assembler version of the code into a binary. Next thing it will um, invoke that special patching file that are uh, the executable that will patch the, the binary with the updated uh, checksum and then it will upload the updated code uh, into the NABU and reset the NABU. So that's, you know, that's how quickly and as you can see NABU is not complaining. Although we've modified the code, we've done some changes, NABU is not complaining. Um, okay, once again uh, very quickly, what, um, what I'll do is I'll open the actual binary file in hex editor. We'll go to our um, usual messages uh, somewhere here, keyboard error, let's modify it. Hello world123. Um, we will save this file. Next thing we'll do is we're going to patch the file with the new checksum and we will upload it into NABU. Uh, let's see send and you will see that NABU restarts and it should restart with the new code. You, you will see in here that first of all it's not showing any more ROM, ROM uh, error messages anymore and um, in a moment when it not notices that the keyboard is not plugged in um, you will see that it will start showing the message that we told it to show. Um, counting five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Okay, hello world, one, two, three, that's done. This is how you can very quickly iterate on, um, you know, on the assembly uh, with the use of a tool like the EEPROM emulator. Um, like I said, this EEPROM emulator is uh, my project. It's open source, you can uh, build it yourself. It makes your life so much easier when you're hacking um, old 8-bit um, hardware. Um, 
So that's it. So no more ROM errors. We now know how to collect, uh, calculate the checksum. We know how to recompile the code. Get programming, guys. Um, all the Z80 gurus um, join, um, join the other guys. Um, join Ken um, and let's, um, let's get this Nabulu stuff up and running. I want to see CPM uh, working on it. Okay, um, I think that's it uh, for today. Um, thanks, for, uh, thanks for listening to me and thanks for supporting my channel. I see quite a few of you guys have um, um, subscribed to my channel. Quite a few of you are watching but not subscribing. Um, see, this is my fancy VFD uh, display that shows the uh, subscribers count. I've got 553, uh, 533 of you. Um, help me to get to the fourth digit. Um, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.